Hello, and welcome to my video on poems in CMMC. So what is a poem? It is a plan of action and milestones. And it's not a new concept with CMMC. They've existed for many years now. So we're going to look comprehensively at all mentions of poems in the context of CMMC. And I am Jeff Baldwin. I am a provisional instructor and CMMC certified assessor. And I always date all of my presentations with the date, of course, because things do change over time. So today's date is October 16th, 2024. So if you are watching from the future, hello, and let me know how things have changed. So with that, I'll move on to the agenda here. First thing that we are going to go over are what are POEMs or P-O-A-N-M's. POEMs is what we usually say when we're using the acronym. And then what does the 32 CFR part 170 say about poems? This is known as the CMMC rule. And how does temporary deficiencies play into that? Uh, there's two pieces where they are mentioned. First is again in that 32 CFR part 170 and in DODAM. Then we're going to compare the new concept called an operational POA or plan of action versus the assessment poem. They are not the same things. We'll be looking at the two of those and comparing them. Then we'll also discuss the poems in the context of the duty Fed Rent moderate equivalency memo. Then we will go into the new 312.2. So we have a new CMMC level two assessment guide and it has some refinements to 312.2. Then we'll look at the CMMC level two poem criteria. What are allowable poems? What are not allowable poems? And then we will compare CMMC versus RMF and the approaches that they take to poems. And then I'll leave with some takeaways that you can take back to your organizations that kind of summarizes everything that we talked about. So the first thing that we're going to look at is what are poems or plan of action and milestones? So for this one, I went to the NIST glossary, just because that's where I always go. And they have defined a poem as a document for a system that identifies tasks needing to be accomplished, details resources required to accomplish the elements of the plan, any milestones in meeting the tasks, and scheduled completion dates for those milestones. And that definition is from 837 Rev2. So when I talk about risk management framework or RMF, that is the governing document for RMF is 800-37. So since we did mention that thing called a plan of action, uh, which was first introduced in 800 there is no definition of POA or plan of action inside of the NIST glossary. So I'm just annotating that there. And then I went to the Rev2 page for 8171. I pulled down their plan of action template that they provide, and I provided a screenshot of it that below. So looking quickly at that plan of action milestone, there is no required format for what poems look like in CMMC as of today. That may or may not change when we move to EMAS because EMAS will probably expect a certain format for plan of action of the milestones if they end up getting uploaded there. Uh, that's a little bit of a TBD, um, but this is what the NIST version of a poem looks like. You first identify what is the weakness, who's responsible for correcting it. Is there a resource estimate that's been funded, unfunded? Do you need to go out and get funding to solve it? Do we have a scheduled completion date when we think it will be completed? And then do we have interim completion steps? If it's a very complex thing with multiple steps, we can put completion dates against those steps so that we can tr track our progress against meeting that scheduled, scheduled completion date. Then we can end if there's any changes to the milestones and how it was the weakness identified. Was that part of an external assessment or is it an internal assessment? How is it identified? And then we give a status for is it ongoing or complete? Is it closed or open? Now, there is a POEM template from FedRAMP as well. It has maybe two or three times as many columns. It's very complex, has a lot of things, parts to it. So when you are an OSC or an OSA, an organization seeking certification or an organization seeking assessment, you can select 
your own format for a poem, as long as it has those necessary elements of having the weakness and the milestones and scheduled completion dates per the definition there. So with the next slide, we're going to look at first on the top left, the definition from 32 CFR part 170 that defines plan of action and milestones. It means a document that identifies tasks need to be accomplished, details resources required to accomplish the elements of the plan, any milestones in meeting the task and scheduled completion dates for the milestones as defined in NIST SP 800-115. So everything up until as defined in is the same. So no changes from the rest of the NIST universe to the CMMC 800-171 universe here. But this is a, on the bottom left here, we have a CMMC custom term, an operational plan of action as used in security requirement 312.2. So in security requirement 312.2, means that the formal artifact, which identifies temporary vulnerabilities and temporary deficiencies, for example, necessary system updates, patches, reconfigurations as threats evolved, and the implementation of requirements and documents, how they'll be mitigated, corrected, or eliminated. The OC defines the format. Again, there's no standard format required. You can have it a document, which you're a crazy person if you have it in a document. Spreadsheets are way better because you can always filter on spreadsheets. And if you're fancy, you got a database and it would have specific content of the operational plan of action. All operational plan of action does not identify a timeline for remediation is not the same as a poem, which is associated with an assessment for remediation of deficiencies that must be completed within 180 days. So in CMMC, if you have a poem, they must be fixed within 180 days. If you have an operational plan of action, there is not a requirement to be completed within 180 days for any items that you'd be listing on there. So going in a little bit further into what exactly does the rule say about POAMs, we're going to first look at the part on the right. So not all requirements immediately be met to be eligible for contract award. So not all requirements must be immediately be met to be eligible for a contract award. If the minimum score is achieved on the assessment equal to 80% and certain critical requirements are met, OSAs will achieve a CMMC status of conditional CMMC level two or conditional level two, which via a C3PO assessment, CMMC third-party assessment organization as applicable. All not met requirements must be noted in an assessment plan and milestones, POAM. At the, this point, the OSA will have satisfied CMMC requirements needed for contract award. OSAs must have met all 110 security requirements of AR-171 within 180 days of receiving their conditional CMMC status, which must be verified with a second assessment called a POAM closeout assessment. So all the CCPs and CCAs out there, that would be your CAP or CMMC assessment process phase four is the POEM closeout assessment. Now, if that POEM closeout assessment finds that all those requirements have been met, so all your not mets have been converted to met, then the OSA will achieve a final level two or a final level two C3PO as applicable. So if you're doing this all self-assessment, you don't actually get a certification, but if you are going to work through a C-3PO, you would be getting that final actual certification issued from the C-3PO. However, if in the process of that poem closeout, not all your requirements have been changed from not met to met, then you lose your status completely. At, then your if you had a conditional certification from a C-3PO, it will expire and you will no longer have a CMMC status. Now, of course, you can always appeal that, and, but, uh, and then the last note there is, you would want to enter your SPUR score to update the um, new score. So if you were at an 88, and now you're at 110, you'd want to update your score in SPURS after you do the poem close up. Now, looking to the table to the left, table one, which is on page 83,095, we can look at that table and see that level one does not allow for poems. 
So when you are required to enter your Spurs score for a level one, you're just going to get a little checkbox that says yes or no. Yes, I meet all 15 requirements. No, I don't meet all 15 requirements. Pretty simple there. When you go down to level two self, level two C3PO and level three Dibcac, the main thing here is that yes, you can have poems and those poems must be closed within 180 days. And then you would be entering your scores when you have that first assessment, whatever score you had, if it's passing, and then your after you close out, you would update your score again. Now, the rest of the table, you can kind of go off through on your own, but that was the main content that I wanted to cover was a we're going to allow some poems. Because remember, in CMMC 1.0, many years ago, we were not allowing poems. CMMC 2.0 allows poems. And now with the rule, we have codified that we allow poems. Now, that 32 CFR part 110, or oops, sorry, 170, also includes those definitions for enduring exceptions and temporary deficiencies. Those were added to the rule. And that part uh, 170.21, is really what we're looking at on the last slide. And then we have the 312.2 control, which uh, allows for the development and implementation of the operational plans of actions, or that POA, designed to correct deficiencies and reduce or eliminate vulnerabilities in organizational systems. And then again, they note the operational plans of actions are different from POEMs permitted under conditional assessment. And the rule has been updated to make this distinction clear. And the CMMC rule does not prohibit the use of an operational plan of action to address necessary information system update patches or reconfiguration as starts evolve. And then they give you this little nugget here, which is vendor limitations with respect to FIPS validation could be considered enduring exceptions or temporary deficiencies and should be addressed in an OSA's operational plan of action. So the rule introduces these things so it makes sense for us to define them because they are highly relevant to the poem so starting top left temporary deficiency means a condition where remediation of a discovered deficiency is feasible and a known fix is available or is in process the deficiency must be documented in an operational plan of action so temporary deficiency goes on to the operational plan of action Temporary deficiency is not based on an in-progress initial an implementation of a CMMC security requirement, but arises after an implementation. So after we've implemented something and we found that there's an issue, then we are going to track that individually. So a temporary deficiency may apply during the initial implementation of a security requirement if during rollout specific issues with a very limited subset of equipment is discovered that must be separately addressed. There is no standard duration for which a temporary deficiency may be active. For example, FIPS validated crypto that requires a patch and the patch version is no longer the validated version may be a temporary deficiency CMMC custom term. So recapping all that, it is a temporary issue that's known about you as the uh, OSC or the OSA has identified it yourself. You either identified it after an initial implementation or during that, in during that initial implementation, and you have steps for how you're going to handle that. And then they use the FIPS example, which is really good because if you are in that scenario and the vendor is going to revalidate and go through you know, the uh, FIPS 140 validation process, it's going to take more than 180 days, unfortunately. So if that was on a poem, you would not be able to close that poem in the 180 days. So it's good that it falls under a temporary deficiency. Now, bottom right, we identify, or the rule defines enduring exception means a special circumstance or system where remediation and full compliance with CMMC security requirements is not feasible. Examples include systems required to replicate the configuration of fielded systems, otherwise known as a restricted information system as one of the subcategories of specialized assets. Medical devices, test equipment, test equipment being another category of specialized asset. OT and IOT as more uh, examples of specialized assets. Now, there is no operational plan required, but circumstances must be documented within a system security plan. 
Um, so we're not going to add these things to any plan to fix them because they're an exception to a standard. And then the enduring nature means that they're permanent. We're not going to have them around temporarily. They're going to be permanent. And then specialized assets and GFE may be enduring exceptions. Yes, absolutely. So that is in the rule. When we go to the next slide, we can see that, hey, these things are not new. The DODAM has had temporary deficiencies and isolated during exceptions for years. So we're going to start to the right this time and look at DODAM and compare that to 32 CFR Part 170. So DODAM starts in Section A here, or sorry, H here with temporary deficiencies and or isolated during exceptions which occur during initial implementation or arise after implementation, that sounds familiar, right? Are to be expected in most complex environments. So this gives us a lot more uh, detail than the 32 CFR did around temporary deficiencies, but let's take a look through. Temporary deficiencies that are appropriately addressed in a plan of action, for example, deficiency reviews, milestones, and show progress towards the implementation of corrections to reduce or eliminate identified vulnerabilities should be as assessed as implemented. For example, when a plan of action addresses a temporary deficiency that arises after implementation, for example, FIPS crypto has been implemented but subsequent patch, that's the same example they give before, we're going to score that as implemented. So. If you used to have FIPS, something got updated, you no longer have FIPS because it's an updated version, put it on the POA here and you will be scored as implemented. A temporary deficiency may also arise during the initial implementation. If during rollout specific issues, a certain equipment is discovered that needs to be separately addressed, certain hardware or software unexpectedly needs to be changed for the requirement to be successfully applied. That's the same as we saw in 32 CFR. Now, if the implementation rule has otherwise been completed, this temporary deficiency plan of action would be considered and the requirement score is implemented. There is no standard duration for which a temporary deficiency may be active. It is what is reasonable, which would take into consideration the availability of the solution, the cost and time to implement the overall risk and whether any mitigations are applied in the interim. Generally, deficiencies should be resolved as soon as reasonably possible. So that little bit about what is the duration is different from 32 CFR. 32 CFR didn't necessarily give you that additional guidance. Now in DODAM, we call them isolated during exceptions instead of just enduring exceptions. Uh, encountered during implementation, such as unique equipment or environments, specialized manufacturing equipment, or unique laboratory environment may prevent the implementation of certain security requirements. Isolated enduring exceptions are typically not suitable to address in plans of actions, but when described along with any mitigations in the system, system security plan, such as exceptions should be assessed as implemented. So it's again saying, hey, if you got these problems, uh, you can still pass, right? So that's the concern a lot of folks have with CMMC is, oh my goodness, if I don't have this one place and this one control in this one spot, I'm going to fail the whole thing and I'm not going to be able to win contracts. Is that reasonable? No, I don't believe it is. So I actually like that we had some of the flexibility in here and for whatever reason, most people in the CMMC ecosystem never read uh, DODAM in much depth to see that these things existed. Uh, for me, when I'm going through an assessment and such, I'm looking for whether issues are systemic, which means they're widespread, or are they an isolated issue? So the scenarios that we're given here with specific hardware, special, spe specialized equipment, that's going to be an isolated issue for that type of device that you might have in your environment versus the entire environment. If it's the entire environment, it's a systemic uh, issue. When it's an isolated issue, it's, you know, isolated and you get a little bit more flexibility uh, for addressing those types of things. Now, looking to the left, plan of actions addressing unimplemented security requirements are not a substitute for a completed requirement. Security requirements not implemented, whether plan of action is placed or not, will be assessed as not implemented. For example, if the initial rollout of 353 multi-factor authentication is only 75% complete and there is a plan of action still being implemented, 353 will be considered not implemented as the requirement has not been fully implemented. So that's an important distinction to make, right? Because we're going back to the right here. We're seeing that, you know, we already had a rollout. The rollout is 100% complete and we found some issues. That's different than we didn't complete the rollout. 
So if you didn't complete the rollout, you're not going to be able to being scored as a temporary deficiency. Uh, you're not planning for a temporary deficiency. It's sort of something that happens after the fact. You know, you don't plan to fail. It's just like, oh, something didn't quite go right. You know, we otherwise implemented it, but we're missing a couple spots we have to fix. And last but not least, a lack of a plan of action for unimplemented secure requirements will result in 3.12.3 being assessed as not implemented. So if you are don't have any kind of tracking for your deficiencies, then you're not going to be scored as implemented for 3.12.2. All right, moving on. This is a table I made. There is no source for this. So if you disagree with this table, perfectly fine. There's nothing authoritative about this table. But let's look and see what I came up with, right? So we have some characteristics, we have operational POAs, and we have assessment POAMs. So one of the things that I see there is who's identifying items on an operational POA. It's the OSA. Um, when you're doing an assessment POAM, if you're doing that self-assessment, you might be identifying things and putting them on your assessment POAM and giving yourself, you know, hey, we're... We're an 88, but we have poems and we self-scored ourselves, fine. Uh, and then C3PO, of course, will give you the conditional certification. A C3PO, unless they're being used in a consulting capacity, would not be adding anything to your operational poem or identifying items for your operational poem. Now, of course, if you do engage a C3PO for that consulting, you cannot engage them for the assessment later on for three years per the rule. All right, so when are those identified? Um, well, when you're doing the operational POA, it's kind of doing self-assessment, you're kind of working through things, you're doing them before the certification assessment. I meant to update the slide here. Uh, to the right, it's probably gonna be more like during the, the certification assessment. So during the assessment, you will identify things for the POAM that's occurring in you know phase three of the cap, you know, you're finalizing the, the POAM there. Whereas the operational POA, you will know those things, or you should know those things. Uh, the main thing that I'm trying to get at is that you cannot walk into an assessment with a C-3PO with these vulnerabilities, not on an operational POA, and be like, oh, yeah, we knew about that. Like, well, why wasn't it on your POA? It's more about, did the external third party identify the issue, or did you self-identify the issue? And is that self-identified issue a temporary deficiency? Then that's something that you would want to have on an operational POA. So how are they scored? Things on the operational POA, like we mentioned, are going to be scored as met or scored as implemented, and we're not going to deduct points. If they are on the assessment POAM, we are going to mark them as not met and deduct the points. The next piece is what types of items are included? Again, this is the direct quote from the rule. Necessary information system updates, patches, or re reconfiguration as threats evolve. And then from an assessment poem, it'll be more like, hey, this control is not fully implemented, and there's one of the assessment objectives that you are missing for the control, so it is scored as not met. Temporary deficiencies. Do we have them in operational POAs? Yes, we do. We include them there. Do we include them in the assessment poem? No, we do not. Because again, temporary deficiencies would be scored as met. Now, I did give two kind of different examples, just kind of very generic. For that item one, a specific host name or IP is missing a service pack or OS update with an associated CVE or CVSS score. That would be kind of the types of things that you might see on an operational POA versus an assessment POAM. You might see something like 314.1, system is not meeting the defined timeframes for applying patches. You can see kind of how they're similarly related, but written in different ways potentially. Now for my second example, System component previously had FIPS 140 validation that was invalidated by a secured patch vendors pursuing FIPS. And then the counterpoint to that for the assessment poem might look like 3.13.11. System does not implement FIPS validated encryption anywhere within the system and never has. So the main difference there being, you know, you previously had it and now it's invalidated. That's operational POA. You never had it anywhere. You never had FIPS mode on, whatever the case may be. That's going to be a finding and subtracting points. Now, the next thing that I'm going to cover is the FedRAMP moderate equivalency memo. So plan of action and milestone. Continuous monitoring strategy required by CA7. Uh, these, these control, that control is from 853 and FedRAMP uses 853. 
Continuing monitoring monthly executive summary validated annually by a FedRAMP recognized 3, 3PO or 3PAL, whatever you want to say it is. Um, so duty requirements for FedRAMP monitor equivalency do not allow for POEMs resulting from a 3PO assessment of the CSB's CSO, aka assessment POEM. You cannot have active items on an assessment POEM. So what does that mean? You need to be perfect, okay? So all POEM actions must be corrected and validated by the 3PO as close. So same sort of thing. If you do have that 3PO assessment, they identify some POEMs, you correct and they close out those POEMs, you are good to go from the moderate equivalency in terms of POEMs. However, CSPs are allowed to have operational POEMs. I don't know why they add the dash M or the and the ampersand M there, um, but it should be like operational POA which are not the result of FedRAMP recognized repo assessments. So even in the FedRAMP realm here, we have the concept of an assessment poem versus an operational poem. Those operational poems are being things like we're tracking and fixing these things that we have identified as vulnerabilities, not things that a assessor has identified as issues with our security control implementations. So CSPs are allowed to have an operational POA, they are not allowed to have an assessment poem with active open items. Now, going to the CMMC level two assessment guide, this is the rewritten here. Um, it's kind of funny because you can see there that the operational plan of action is not uppercase. So it's lowercase operational because when we go back to the previous version, it just said plan of action. They didn't have the operational there. With this new revision, they've inserted the word operational. So looking at the further discussion pieces of that, um, when you write a plan of action to find the clear goal or objective of the plan, you may include the following in the plan, ownership who's accountable, specific steps or milestones, uh, assigned responsibility, milestones to plan, uh, measure plan progress, and completion dates. All that sounds pretty much like everything we've already covered with the POAs and the POEMs, right? So we look at 312, it ensures developing and implementing operational plan to correct and reduce vulnerabilities in systems is driven by risk management requirement 311.1, which is your annual risk assessment, which promotes periodically assessing risk to organizational systems. 312.2 promotes monitoring security controls on an ongoing basis as defined in requirement 312.3 which is your monitor security controls. An operational plan of action is in accordance with 312.2, differs from CMMC assessment poem as described in 32 CFR part 170.21. The assessment poem places conditions on which security requirements can be assessed as not met and allows the OSA to qualify for a CMMC status of conditional level self, conditional level two CPO, or conditional level three DIBGEC. Operational plans of action are not subject to the 100-day POEM, POEM closeout requirement. Severity, availability of remediation, and business requirements are among the first factors to consider when creating and maintaining operational plan of actions. And the example we give, as IT director, one of your duties is to develop a action plan when you discover that your company is not meeting security requirements or when a security issue arises. A recent vulnerability scan identified several items that need to be addressed, so you develop a plan to fix them. Your plan identifies the people responsible for fixing the issues, how to do it, and when the remediation will be completed. You also define how to verify the person responsible has fixed the vulnerability. You document this in operational plan of action that is updated as milestones are reached. You have separate resources, review, the modifications after they have been completed to ensure that plan is implemented correctly. So the very next thing that we'll talk about is the POEM criteria. So from the DODAM scoring, which is carried into CMMC here, we know that each CMMC requirement is either worth one, three, or five points. Typically only the one pointers are permitted, except where it's indicated in the excerpt to the right. So looking at to the right here, an OSA is only permitted to achieve the status of conditional level two self or conditional level two as appropriate if all of the following requirements or conditions are met. The assessment score divided by the total number of level two requirements is greater than or equal to 0.8 or 
None of the security requirements included in the POEM have a point value greater than one as specified in the CMMC scoring methodology set forth in 170.24, except 3.13.11 CUI encryption may be included on a POEM if encryption is employed but is not FIPS validated, which is in result in a point value of three. So instead of subtracting five on that, you would subtract three. But wait a minute. Didn't we just talk about if you had FIPS on an operational POA, you'd be scored as met? Correct. So that goes back to if it's on an assessment POEM where you don't have uh, FIPS encryption, but you just had regular non-FIPS encryption, and you've never had FIPS encryption, and it's not previously invalidated, then you would subtract the points. If you previously had FIPS validated that was invalidated by a patch or whatever else, then you could throw that on the operational plan of action. So that's just a, a deviation there. So it depends on whether you ever had FIPS implemented or not, essentially. But they do give you these six critical controls. And if you have, you cannot have any of these ones in here. So first one, external connections, 3120 external connections. Makes a lot of sense because uh, that is really where you're connecting to other systems. So that is main your main egress points of data leaving your environment. So not having a good grasp over that is kind of critical. Uh, control public information. This is um, looking at not inadvertently putting CUI into your marketing, not inadvertently putting CUI into your website or your social media accounts having that process where you're reviewing those things before you are publishing. 312.4 doesn't really have a point value. Um, through the DODAM scoring, it says system security plans cannot be, if you're missing a system security plan, you cannot have a score at all. So your score is blank. Escort visitors, that's another critical piece if you do have visitors to your environment and they're not authorized for the access to the CUI. You should be escorting them throughout your controlled area. Physical access logs, having records of who went where and when, they're very useful if we are trying to do any kinds of forensics. And then managing your physical access, because uh, when we think about security and we go back to, hey, if I have physical access, I have the ability to do a lot of cool things like key logging, physical key loggers, um, trying to add additional things to whatever, right? So there's things you can do with physical access that are still considered pretty high risk. So if you're missing any of those six controls, they are not allowed on the POEM. Now, next, I want to compare some of the differences here. So a lot of folks might have a risk management framework background. I have risk management framework background as well. I worked with it since the original 853 up through 853 Rev 5. So I've seen all of the changes. It's a very small control set back in 20, 2005 versus today. So looking at some of these differences, CMMC is limited to a subset of controls that are allowed to have poems. So that list that we're just talking about has to be level one, can't be one of those six, et cetera, right? Those are the only allowable poems. Anything that's a three or a five, other than the FIPS, not allowed, right? Now, when we're talking about POEMs for RMF, it's not as limited. It's more about residual risk and whether an authorizing official will accept the risk of what is going to be allowed as a POEM. Now, they could say, that's not acceptable. I'm not going to accept it as a POEM. I'm not going to give you an ATO. Go back to the drawing board. Keep working on it. That's things that they can do in RMF, but they have a lot more flexibility for any control being on a POEM. Now, typically, from my experience with it, if there's any issues with access control or auditing, then you typically will not get an ATU, and those will not be acceptable poems. Those are the critical ones. IA, AC, and AU. If you have, like, minor documentation or training stuff, it's like, yeah, whatever. Um, so, CMMC assessment poems tend to be more aligned around your performance against your defined standards over time and procedural tasks that you have around your standards and your policy and procedures. And they do not typically list out specific vulnerability scan findings. So an assessment POEM for CMMC is not generally going to have 
those types of, you're missing this patch on this device, right? Now, if you are experienced with RMF, then you're already like, hey, I have seen poems that look like this system's missing patches, right? Because the RMF poems tend to look more like the CMMC's operational POA and heavily list out vulnerability scan findings. And part of that is when you are doing RMF of a system, of an agency system, the policy and procedures and those things being performed over time are typically inherited from the overall parent agency of that system. So your dash ones and your policy and procedures and your plans are already predefined uh, for them. So they don't normally focus as heavily on those during the assessments and they tend to focus a lot more on, hey, do you have a higher critical finding? You can't have an ATO. It's like, well, okay, cool. Um, then we're going into the next one. Uh, if in RMF, it's more normal to have that authority to operate with the poem because your poem, again, is going to look more like an operational poem. Um, with those high and critical things with the last bullet, they typically won't give you the ATO until you fix them. So they don't end up on your, your ATO with poem. Uh, it's more common to get an ATO with poem than it is to get a clean ATO that doesn't have any poems. However, in CMMC, the assessment poems should not be the norm as they're time bound to 180 days, while the RMF poems can persist longer than 180 days. So that's the other main thing. In RMF, you know, kind of standard, yeah, you're gonna not you're not gonna get through it without some sort of poem, and you're gonna get your ATO and there's gonna be some sort of poem, and that's just kind of par for the course. When you get into CMMC, it's kind of like, no, we don't want any poems, because you know, that kind of puts us out of business if we have poems. Now we do have the safety net a little bit of 180 days for, you know, those 22 slash 23 requirements that we can potentially poem, but it is not nearly as flexible. And part of that is just structurally and how it's designed. So going to our takeaways here, CMMC 1 point said no poems. That is no longer the case today in 2024. Operational POAs and assessment poems are not the same thing. Do not use those terms interchangeably. And yes, you can have a limited assessment poems in CMMC, but you must have a passing score of 8% to receive a conditional certification from a C3PO. Now, of course, you can do the self-score and stuff as well. And the key there being limited poem items not an unlimited. You can't pick any control in the entire AN-171 and say that one is going to be a poem. Nope. It's limited to which ones are available as poem. Uh, another takeaway for you is the operational poems do not reduce your score, but you need to show progress against the milestones. I kind of added that bit. It doesn't specifically say that in the 32 CFR part, but the DODAM does say that. That yeah, you have things on the POA, you just can't throw them there and then never look at them again. It makes sense that you might want to, you know, actually show progress that you're closing those things out. Not a good idea. Just say, yep, it's on the POA and I have to look at it again. That's really not the intent. So showing progress is would be recommended. And then with our updates to uh, the assessment guide in the CMMC model, the 312.2, is the requirement that corresponds to operational POA. Because before, when we first saw that control, we're like, oh, they're asking for a POEM, but I have everything met, so I don't have a POEM. Oh, but I might have a risk register, right? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you can call your risk register an operational POA as long as you, however you're addressing the 312.2 control, you're talking about how you're tracking those types of vulnerabilities and stuff doesn't have to be an operational POA. It could be something else, but you have to define it within that control. And last but not least, you cannot call every requirement a temporary deficiency, add them to an operational POA, and score yourself as 110. That's a nice try, though. Because again, thinking back to some of that criteria for something to be considered a temporary deficiency has to be past an initial rollout. So if you never did anything at all, it's not a temporary deficiency. Temporary deficiency is something that's specifically deficient with something you've already rolled out. And I'll make the slides available, but here are the different links that you can go read up on the different things that I used in the slides. And then the last but not least, connect with me on LinkedIn, email me if you'd like. And I hope you got value out of this presentation.
and I'll see you next time.